uh, July 18th. Open. Uh, roll call. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Knight. Allen. Walkley. Yes. Alt. Here. Von Traeger. Here. And Nichols. Here. We have a quorum, Mr. Chair. Okay. <coughs> uh, approval of the minutes. Agenda minutes. Any comments or? I'll approve the minutes as stated. A second. A second. Okay. There you are. Roll call. Okay. The motion by all supported by Walkley to approve the uh, meeting minutes of 7-18-2013. Von Traeger? Yes. Alt? Yes. Walkley? Yes. And Nichols? Yes. They're approved. Okay. Uh, no public comments? Okay. Uh, public hearing for the, uh, we're read the application. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll kick it off and then I'll let Mike, Mike take it. Um, we have a variance uh, applicant setback var side yard setback variance application tonight. It was submitted by Mabel Rexford of 717 Chestnut Street, and uh, she's here tonight, along with uh, Bob Rexford, her son. And so uh, I'm not sure which one eventually may want to say a few words or answer questions, but they can do that at a later point in time. Just as a, uh, a reminder, a point of information uh, under the state statute. Uh, to, uh, to grant a, a setback or a dimensional variance. It takes a majority of the full board. So in this case, uh, because several board members are missing, all four of you would have to vote in favor of the variance in order for it to be granted. So if the vote, for example, was three to grant, one to deny, it would be denied. I just want to make you aware of that. So, And you've been in that situation in the past. Having said that, uh, Mike Coy, who works with us at the city here, Mike is going to uh, to make the staff presentation. Mike. I will be going over the slides, and uh, I was also involved in the uh, preparation of the of the staff report. And uh, essentially, uh, as we know, it is a setback variance of the Rexford home on Chestnut. The first picture that we have up and that is also in your packet that's basically showing the west wall of the home uh, which is where this uh, uh, variance would occur. I uh, wanted to show basically the, the door that uh, Mrs. Rexford goes out when she does go to her car and so forth. I uh, want to bring real quick attention to the stump, the tree that had been removed. Um, what I'm going to do is show you, uh, uh, I'm not going to show you a slide of this, but on the very back page of the staff report there are two pictures. And the top picture shows a similar picture from that angle, but what I uh, wanted to point out is the tree and its proximity both to the Rexford home and then the home to the west. I believe that's the Johnsons. And you can see from the size of that tree stump that it uh, certainly was, uh, my understanding, a tree that the branches, everything had become large enough and so forth that they were certainly uh, uh, in the roof line areas of both homes and so forth. And also at the bottom of that picture, uh, what you see is where the uh, pavement, the asphalt pavement, used to be, uh, where it ended, and obviously it didn't go farther in because of, of the tree. This next picture here essentially shows the same area of the house. Uh, I believe that would be Mrs. Rexford's car is parked in the driveway. And what they have done is they've taken the asphalt out. And my understand, it looks like it's been paved. But uh, the tree stump has been taken out. Uh, am I correct? Yeah, the tree stump has been taken out. The applicant, uh, Mabel Rexford, uh, she lives at 717 Chestnut Street here in Cadillac. Her son Bob will be uh, speaking. Specifically, I'm going to ask Bob when I'm done speaking to explain how he plans to tie in the roof line uh, of the proposed uh, uh, carport roof and how he's going to, that's going to be tied into the roof of the current home. So we, so we have a good idea of that. The attachments you have, you have the ZBA application. 
from the Rexfords, you have a site plan uh, that was submitted uh, by them, basically showing uh, where uh, it lies in relation to the lot and the home. We also included a GIS aerial photo of the site, and it shows some of the neighboring homes also from above, so you can kind of get a feel for the neighborhood and how some of the homes in the immediate area um, line up with what is near the lot lines. And then we also included for you a letter of support from the neighbor immediately to the west, uh, Barb and Dick Johnson, who basically uh, sent us a letter of support uh, that they certainly do not themselves have an issue with the uh, uh, addition that's going to be proposed. Mrs. Rexford uh, wishes to construct a carport attached to the home on the west side. Her driveway is located there currently. They are seeking, she is seeking a reduction in the side yard setback uh, according to the city uh, ordinance, uh, or zoning ordinance section 46-629 of the city code. They propose to build a carport roof over the current driveway and it would be at a width of 12 feet and it would extend to three feet, four inches from the west property line uh, with the Johnsons to the west. <coughs> Section 46, 629 of the city zoning ordinance. Uh, in Division 18, it identifies the minimum side yard setback for an R1 residential neighborhood, which is what this is. The ordinance calls for a total yard setback of 25 feet. Uh, side yard setback with the least yard setback at 10 feet. The applicant is requesting a, various, a variance of 7 feet from the minimum, resulting in a side yard setback of 3 feet, three feet 4 inches is what the, uh, the applicant's site plan shows. The width of this lot is 66 feet. Uh, this and the surrounding lots to the east, to the west, and to the south are all also 66 feet wide. Uh, they were platted that way. Uh, these are narrow lots. They pre-existed uh, and were developed prior to the establishment of the R1 residential neighborhood standards with a minimum width of 100 feet. The depth of this lot is approximately 158 feet gives the lot a total square footage of 10,428 uh, 428 square foot. And this also is less than the what is normally considered the minimum lot size for an R1 residential district. There is an alley uh, right away directly to the rear of her lot. And uh, so that is a, a alleyway, right of way that uh, they use and a lot of other neighbors use it also. Many of the homes in the immediate area, uh, they also have additions or uh, portions of the building, the homes uh, that do not meet the current side yard setback requirement according to the R1 classification. This uh, is an aerial view. Uh, the arrow uh, obviously points to Mrs. Rexford's home. Uh, to the right of the home is where Chestnut's, Chestnut Street is. And uh, basically right next to the arrow to the right, you can see the alley right of way that I mentioned. And basically if you, you look carefully at it, um, you can obviously see the narrowness of the lot and you can see the narrowness of the neighboring lots and uh, you can kind of get a feel for the setbacks of some of the neighboring homes. This is the site plan submitted by the Rexfords. Uh, again the arrow pointing to the right is actually pointing toward Chestnut Street and the Johnson's house to the west is to the top. And it essentially shows the layout of her home in relation to the lot. Section 46-69, uh, Part B, Part 2 of the
code authorizes that a variance where there is a reason of narrowness, shape, or area of a property or exceptional conditions of such property, the application of the zoning regulations would result in practical difficulties or undue hardship upon the owner. Provided such relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good and without substantially impairing the intent or purpose of the ordinance. The variant standards. Basically, the Zoning Board of Appeals may authorize a variance from the strict application of the ordinance whereby reason of exceptional narrowness, shallowness, shape, or area of a property at the time of enactment of the ordinance or by reason of exceptional conditions of such property, the strict application of the regulation would result in practical difficulties to or exceptional undue hardship upon the owner of such property. Having said that, the finding is that this partial represents a pre-existing platted lot possessing a width of 66 feet, as opposed to the normal R1 district requirement of 100 feet. The side yard setback established for the district were based on larger lot width standards. The existing dwelling represents an average size home having an approximate, left or approximate length from east to west of 42 feet. This length does not include an existing attached garage or a carport. The length of the home combined with the required R1 side yard setbacks effectively prevents ground level expansion of the home on either its west or east side without the benefit of a setback variance. Also in finding, the placement of an attached garage or carport on the front of the home, front yard, is not feasible or practical due to the setback restrictions and the design limitations. The placement of an attached garage or carport along the rear elevation of the home is practical due to is not practical due to the existing design and the building limitations associated with connecting it something like that to the actual dwelling. The lot to the immediate west is developed and it does not possess an excess of land along its side yard capable of being acquired and assembled as part of the subject site for Mrs. Red, uh, Rexford. Section 4669, Part 4 of the Code states that in consideration of a variance, the Zoning Board of Appeals shall determine the variance will not result in conditions which, the first one being impair an adequate supply of light and air to the adjacent property, unreasonably increase congestion of the public street, increase the danger of fire or endanger public safety, of the neighborhood, unreasonably diminish or impair established property values within the surrounding area, and lastly, impair the public health, safety, comfort, morals, or the welfare of the inhabitants of the city of Cadillac. The first standard I mentioned uh, having to do with uh, not impairing adequate supply of light and air to the adjacent property. The variance, the proposed variance, is not anticipated to an impair adequate supply of light and air to the adjacent properties. The impacts on light and air to the adjacent properties are not considered significant or beyond the range of impact exhibited by neighboring properties and structures. And in fact, by removing that one large tree, uh, which they have already done, essentially they've probably improved the supply of light to their home and the neighbor's home uh, and possibly also, um, you know, uh, affected the airflow as far as uh, improving it to, to the homes. The second standard, uh, the variance will not unreasonably increase congestion in public streets. Uh, the finding is the variance will not impact traffic volumes. Uh, the proposed carport will not result in additional traffic to or from the site. 
the next standard, the requested variance cannot increase the danger of fire or endanger the public safety. Uh, the, the finding is the requested variance is not anticipated to increase the danger or, of fire or endanger the public safety. Uh, construction of the carport will require compliance with our local building and fire safety permits and codes. The next standard, uh, the variance will not unreasonably diminish or impair established property values within the surrounding area. The finding is the requested variance is not anticipated to unreasonably diminish or impair established property values within the surrounding area. The addition of the carport has the potential to increase the value of the dwelling as well as its future marketability. <coughs> I believe this is the final standard. The requested variance will not impair the public health, safety, comfort, mor morals, or welfare of the inhabitants of the city. The finding is that the requested variance is not anticipated in any way to impair public health, safety, comfort, morals, welfare of the inhabitants of uh, the city of Cadillac. Uh, also, the neighbors to the immediately west of uh, the Rexford property uh, have supported the variance with a letter in writing. Public comments uh, notification was sent to by first class mail to all property owners within 300 feet of this, the Rexford site, the Rexford home. A notice of the hearing was also placed in the Cadillac News. These notices were provided uh, not less than 15 days prior to today. As of this date, uh, when we uh, finished the staff report for you, we had one written comment, and that was received by uh, Barb and Dick Johnson, 719 Chestnut, their neighbors to the west. And they uh, uh, supported the uh, uh, idea of the carport, and they certainly did not themselves have any objections to a, a variance. The conditions are, should the Zoning Board of Appeals approve the variance application, the following conditions are recommended. Prior to construction, the west property line shall be identified and staked by a professional surveyor licensed in the state of Michigan. We, we think that, uh, as a condition, should be a must. All portions of the carport and associated drainage features shall be set back from the property line a distance of not less than three feet. This includes the carport roof, foundation, gutters, downspouts, uh, lighting, etc. Thirdly, interior and exterior lighting uh, shall be des designated to avoid glare onto any adjoining property. Fourth, and I believe last, the design and construction of the carport shall be accomplished in compliance with all local building permits, codes, and requirements. The Zoning Board of Appeals, yourself, uh, you basically have the, uh, uh, you can either approve the variance based on the finding, uh, consistent consistency with the variant standards as detailed in the staff report as we've looked at today. Uh, you can approve it as, as that. You can approve uh, the variance with conditions and we've actually listed a few conditions that staff felt were important. Or you can deny the variance based on a finding of inconsistency with the variant standards. Uh, finally, this is a, a picture of the home from the sidewalk. Uh, just to give you a feel for uh, how it looks in its appearance. What I would like to do is uh, ask Mr. Rexford to uh, speak for a minute and more or less explain uh, how he plans to uh, tie the roof line into the home. Can you state your name and address? I think I heard what you said. My phone was ringing. Um, my name is Bob Rexford. I am Maybell's son. Um, I will probably be building this. I'm a licensed builder. Need your Michigan. address too. Uh, 2641 South 39 Road, Cadillac. Okay. Uh, 
Um, you've got a drawing of the carport as it will be built. Um, I did take the liberty of contacting Bob Scarborough before we poured this new driveway and we have footing holes under the concrete where the, dry, where the new driveway is poured up against the house for the two posts that will hold um, it would be the north and south end of the truss. Um, basically what I'm looking at is a 12 by 24 roof supported by four posts. Um, the pitch of the roof truss will match the pitch of the uh, existing porch in that drawing. So when we're done, the roof will have one continuous slope all the way across the carport and then back down on the south side. Uh, we'll trim the roof with the same color, white aluminum that the house is, and the same shingles. So it should be looking like it was built and you know meant to be there after it's done. Uh, the carport is actually closer to my mom's house, or will be, than the tree was. The, this big maple tree was actually just about right on the lot line, um, and that was has been a concern of our neighbors for quite a while. So. Barb and Dick Johnson, the neighbors at 717 Chestnut, and my mom went together and paid to take this tree out. Um, and right after they got the tree out, Barb and Dick redid their shingled roof because the tree was getting moss and stuff on it for years. And uh, I actually went over and power washed it one time for them because of the tree. So I think we it'll be an improvement uh, all the way around. And my mom is, as our neighbors are, is getting up there in years. I think she'll be 89 on her next birthday. So she's getting a little tired of scraping frost and snow and everything off her car. And she does like to park right by the house. The garage is basically a storage garage with some small overhead doors in, in its way in the back by the alley. As far as getting anything into the backyard uh, because of the carport, obviously it's going to be a drive-through carport and the alley gives you access to the backyard uh, without having to worry about going around the house. So, unless you've got questions, um, that's all I've got. Okay, uh, anybody else here wants to say anything? Okay, the public uh, hearing parts will be closed. Do we make our uh, comments or give me a motion? I personally see no problem with it. I mean, you look at the aerial picture, every, there's a lot yeah. that are really closer to the lot line than what she is, so it's like nature the beast of the yeah. size of those lots that it it's just kind of flows with everything else in that area it doesn't show anything really different question to Jerry should we put a uh, condition that it can't be ever enclosed as a garage uh, sure you can sorry you can sure I mean, that don't I mean basically you can add a condition that the the uh, the design of the carport shall be as uh, as provided for in the drawing. Yeah. You can add that as a condition so that it remains an open air carport and if the applicants wanted to enclose it at some point in time they'd have to come back to you. That's the only thing I can see that is mm -hmm. keep it so it can't be enclosed. Quite often people drive through, we, we do all the time. Yeah. If cars aren't in the right order we just drive through yeah. the backyard to the alley. So. I understand that but sometimes it is I mean, down the road, somebody buys it, might want to close it as a garage. And right. Yeah, I wouldn't have any problem with that. Are we open for a motion? We're open for a motion. I move that we uh, approve the uh, application for the variance with the recommendations that have been made in, in accordance with your drawing. I think that's complete, isn't it? Fine. Yeah, second? I second. Welcome, second. 
Okay, you want to call roll call? Okay, the motion by Von Traeger, supported by Walkley, to uh, approve the variance application as submitted, subject to the conditions that were outlined in the staff report, along with the additional condition that it remain an, an open air carport consistent with the design drawing that was submitted tonight uh, with the application. Walkley? Yes. Alt? Yes. Bontrager? Yes. Nichols? Yes. It's approved. Very good. Now you get half one. <laughs> no more scraping. <laughs> <laughs> and there are no other items uh, for tonight. You did notice that we put a copy of the current zoning ordinance on your desk for you. Yeah. Um, we will be, I'll be adding a zoning map to it, but Jim Ray wasn't here, so we weren't able to get blow-ups. And okay. for the next time I see you, we'll get you a zoning map as well. Okay, then uh, the meeting is closed for the night. Okay. Thank you.